The more I study computing systems, the more I realize there's many parallels between processors and human life. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But humor me for a second. Processors need clocks in order to synchronize electrical signals in the system through uptime and downtime, much like how humans need a consistent sleep schedule of uptime and downtime to synchronize their lives. Humor me again for a second. Sometimes the burdens of life become too great and we need a way of relief. This way of relief could come in the form of a family member or close friend helping us out, or maybe just a vacation from our typical burdensome lives. And then when we return, we can then efficiently process all of our tasks as if nothing had happened. Believe it or not, processing units actually have, in some systems, the same capability of relief through direct memory access, also known as DMA. Now you might have heard of direct memory access, or DMA, from a professor during a lecture, maybe reading a technical manual, or reading something online, or maybe a colleague in passing. But maybe you don't know specifically what it does. Simply put, this video will explain the basics of DMA. How does it work? Where is it used? And how is it useful for you in your embedded project? In order to explain direct memory access a little bit more simply, I'm going to propose a more everyday situation that you might encounter to understand the concept of this. Let's say you're helping your friend build a deck, and you've had a prior experience, so you know how to do this. Your friend is kind of just standing in the back, getting some advice, and also figuring out how to do it for themselves the next time. In the middle of building the deck, you start to run out of nails and realize you won't have enough to finish the project. So what do you do? You kindly ask your friend, can you go to the hardware store for me to get nails so I can complete this project? I'll still have work to do, but by the time you get back, I'll be out of nails. The friend kindly agrees and goes to the store to pick up the nails, to transfer the nails from the hardware store to your hands in order to complete this project. Now this may seem like a repetitive task, because the task at hand is really building the deck, but you're doing the important stuff in the front while your friend is doing the repetitive task of going to the store, buying nails and supplies, and coming back and supplying you with them in order to aid the execution of the deck building. If your friend wasn't around or had agreed to get the nails, the project would have to halt and therefore the task you're working on would not be completed until the nails were found, thus increasing the execution time of the project itself. If you haven't figured it out by now, your friend is the DMA. They're the ones that are doing the repetitive task of going to the hardware store and putting the nails in your hands so you can complete the task at hand while you're still working on the actual task. The CPU and the DMA interact much similarly, where the programmer has the ability to give the task of moving memory from one spot to another to the DMA by simply issuing a request through the CPU. The CPU can then continue to do more complex instructions and not have to worry about wasting clock cycles, moving memory back and forth, and have the DMA do it for you. And by the time it's finished, it gives you a poke in the back, like your friend would, to say, here, I have the nails. The DMA gives a poke to the processor through an interrupt, saying, the data has been transferred, and voila. Now you have the best of both worlds. The task is currently being completed, and you're able to get the supplies you need, or the memory moved over to where you need it to, in order for you to continue on with your task without having to halt the processor. Now I alluded to this before, but what DMA actually does is just takes one section of memory in the system and moves it into another section of memory in the system. It's really that simple. You can still do this through the CPU by issuing a mem copy, but the trouble lies is if you're starved for resources, let's say you're on a microcontroller that runs a little bit slower, or you have other parts of the system that need to wait on that data, well, you're essentially wasting CPU time because you'll have to wait for all that stuff to complete or block until it's done. Whereas if you used a peripheral to move this memory, you could free up the CPU to do more important things at the task at hand. And that is the beauty of direct memory access. DMA allows the CPU to do things while you transfer memory from one spot to another. Typically, a programmer can access the DMA through a request line. This request will be paired with a few pieces of information in order for this to be done. The first one is the source address. This is where the data exists that you want to transfer from one spot in the system to another. The next parameter will be the destination address, where you want to store the data from the previous spot in the system, i.e. the source. And then the size. 
The size allows the DMA controller to calculate the maximum address that it needs to stop at before it issues an interrupt to the CPU saying I've transferred all pieces of data. This will be the source address plus the size offset. Once this address is completed, the DMA controller will say I'm finished, I've completed transferring data, and I'm done. It will issue an interrupt to the processor, and in the interrupt service routine, you can now handle that data. I'm James from Zygl Studios, and this was Simply Put.